morning students i'm sagarish biology faculty of e4u classrooms and today we'll be learning about the most important aspects in terms of human physiology which is nothing but breathing and exchange of gases so it is going to be breathing and exchange of gases so being science students try to understand the concepts clearly is that this topic is exactly split into two ways that is one is going to be breathing the other is going to be exchange of gases make sure that you thorough these two concepts for the betterment for your exams as far as breathing and respiration is concerned these two are basically and synonymous terms is that all ox organisms uses oxygen for its growth and you could have studied in glycolysis where the oxygen is being utilized in terms of glycolysis cycle to produce energy that is going to be atp in this process of cellular respiration where a co2 is going to be one of the most important waste product to remove it the tissues veins always plays a vital role in removing this carbon dioxide so intake of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide is termed as breathing and in terms it can also be called as respiration in terms of respiration please ensure that you note there is two types of respiration which is going to be aerobic and then it is going to be anaerobic anaerobic that is going to be absence of oxygen but now our topic demands it is going to be human physiology your concentration should be in terms of what aerobic respiration so before starting any of the human physiology concepts you should be clear that you have to start from the invertebrates for example the sponges respire through diffusion and in terms of earthworm you could have studied earlier it uh, respires through the form of cuticle and then in terms of insects that is going to be cockroach you could have studied in structural organization it could have uh, uh, respired through tracheoles then in terms of insects it is going to be book lungs book gills in terms of uh, fishes you could have studied it is of gills in terms of frog you know very well is that the frogs can even respire through that of skin that is going to be cutaneous mode of respiration whereas in terms of humans the main respiratory organ is going to be lungs so once we stick on to the human respiratory part that is is going to be the lungs we'll be dealing about the clear cut explanation of the diagrams of lungs which is also one expected question the outer layer of the lungs is basically the pleura and the pleura is filled with a fluid called as pleural fluid and this space that is the below part is going to be the diaphragm and then it is going to be the trachea and here the trachea is not made up of bones and trachea is made up of c shaped cartilage which can be an expected question over there where you have this passage it is from nostrils from there it goes to pharynx from there the larynx which you know clearly it is the voice box from there it goes to trachea which i have already told it is going to be a c shaped cartilaginous ring from there this trachea divides into two ways that is going to be bronchi from there it divides to bronchioles and finally it is been filled with a balloon shaped structure called as alveoli in this area the space between two lungs is basically called as mediastinum where the heart is being situated and this can be also be an expected question so our lungs is basically protected in an air tight compartment which you know clearly is that the lungs is protected by the sternum in the front back is the vertebral column and sides is the rib cage and this rib cage has got the muscles which you know it is going to be external intercostal muscles and then it is going to be internal intercostal muscles so once you are thoroughing this breathing and exchange of gases two things you are supposed to stick on one is going to be process of respiration the other is going to be mechanism of respiration as far as this process of respiration is concerned you know very well is that the oxygen goes in goes in to where first to lungs from lungs it is been taken to heart via pulmonary veins from heart it goes to arteries capillaries and from there it goes to the individual cell where the glucose has been added from the digestive system and the oxygen has been added where it forms pyruvate which you have studied and this pyruvate enters into the mitochondria forming energy water plus carbon dioxide the water which has been produced goes to the excretory system as i told earlier the carbon dioxide which has been produced has to be removed from our body this goes for the process of respiration 
whereas in terms of the mechanism of respiration you have two things where the major weightage of this happens over here you have two processes basically one is going to be inspiration the other is going to be expiration in these two processes, you are supposed to stick on even to the diagrams also. You can expect some diagrammatic questions also in this sector where the first process is going to be the inspiration, the other is going to be the expiration. First, inspiration is an active process. You all know being science students what is an active process is, means it requires energy. If I say this is going to be an active process and the expiration is an passive process. Here, in terms of inspiration, there are some muscles involved and in terms of bones is also involved. First is that you have to know one thing is that when the diaphragm is at relaxed shape, it is in doom shaped position, whereas when it stretches or contracts, it becomes flattened structure. So, as I told you earlier is that our lungs is basically an artight compartment which comprises of the diaphragm, which comprises of the diaphragm, external and inter intercostal muscles and this is the vertebral column and the sternum. So, 75% of our contraction happens because of what? Then because of diaphragm. In this case, as I told you earlier, the diaphragm when it is of relaxed position, it is zoom shaped. When it is contracted, it becomes what shaped? Flat shaped structure. So once in this case, you have a muscle over here in terms of inspiration that is going to be external intercostal muscles where it removes or it expands the lungs anteriorly and then it is going to be outwardly. Probably you can see the difference between this diagram and that diagram. In this diagram, the thoracic cavity or the volume of the thoracic segment is increased whereas in this case it has been decreased. Whereas in case of this inspiration diagram which you know very clearly as I told, the diaphragm pulls the lungs, see the aeromark and then the external intercostal muscles moves the lungs anteriorly and outwardly. As a result, the volume of the thoracic cavity is increased and the pressure is decreased. So this is a process of inspiration. The exact vice versa comes to the process of expiration. Yes, the diaphragm relaxes. The internal intercostal muscles brings the lungs to the original position and as a result, the air moves up. Hope so you can see the difference between these two diagrams. In this diagram, the thoracic cavity or the thoracic volume is increased and the pressure is decreased. Whereas in this case, you can see the clear cut explanation which has been given in this diagram. And if you are preparing this uh, breathing and exchange of gases, the main aspect which you are supposed to note down is the values. That is the respiratory volumes and the respiratory capacities. In the previous years of any of these question papers, if you see these values and the capacities plays a vital role on, for our marking. So first is that we'll be dealing about the values being science students by this time, you know, what are the values are. I'm not going to explain all those values in detail. You know the values such that it is going to be the tidal volume. It is going to be the inspiratory reserve volume. It is going to be the expiratory reserve volume. And then it is going to be residual volume. In this time for our fast preparation, I'll just say you to prepare a trick for knowing all these values. If at all, just have the name of this summer film Terry which you are familiar with. See, this becomes the tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and then, it, I mean, residual volume, and then it is going to be inspiratory reserve volume. Now, writing the values is much easier. 500, next is going to be 1000 to that of 1100, 1100 to that of 1200, and finally, it is going to be 2500 to that of 3000 ml. So now knowing these values will be pretty easier for you without the confusion. So of course you all are being familiar with this film and with this you can note the values or the volumes of the respiratory capacities that is these are the volumes. Yeah so I will repeat it is Terry it is T E R I all these things fits over here that is going to be tidal expiratory inspiratory or residual and then it is going to be inspiratory reserve volume. Then how to calculate the capacities? It is always simpler. If you note uh, the, capa the capacities values would have not been given in any of the textbook because this is from the values or the volumes you can very well calculate the capacities from this. For example, I will just note down one example for you so that you can understand the rest of the examples or you can work out the rest of the capacities which has been there. For example, it is going to be inspiratory capacity which is nothing but 
TV plus IRV. You know the values of both these things and you can add, and add these two so that you will be getting the values of capacities. And the most frequent questions which has been asked is going to be the vital capacity which you know clear it is going to be the vital capacity. For this vital capacity again you have one more logic. See you have a college called as VITE. Just have a look that VIT college. Very simple. See V is vital capacity adding of all these things that is going to be I inspiratory tidal and then it is going to be expiratory gives you the capacities of all these volumes. So these are the simple shortcuts which you are supposed to keep it in mind for easily processing those questions and these questions can in term come in terms of match the followings and finding the correct values and then it is going to be the capacities. So if this is going to be the first part, the, there is one more thing where you are supposed to note down the values is that the values of partial pressure of the oxygen and carbon dioxide which is present in our alveoli, lungs and tissues. Probably you know very clearly and you people are familiar with these diagrams as that and all these values are pretty important. For example, stating from say first you have to process this with the process of respiration which I have already mentioned. In terms of this alveoli, see here we have this PO2 of 104 mm Hz and PCO2 of 40 mm Hz. This is that alveolar pressure. From there via pulmonary vein, it is going to the heart. Probably if you go with the process of respiration, I have told you very clearly how the passage and how uh, oxygen is entering into the uh, systems. So is that via the pulmonary vein, it is going to the heart and being uh, Science students, you know from heart it goes to the individual tissues. That is the systemic arteries what we have specif specified here. Is that in tissues where there happens the exchange of gases. That is what we have come to the next sector of topic. That is going to be exchange of gases. See here in terms of the tissues PO2 is of 95 mmHc and PCO2 is going to be 40 mmHc. That is going to be the partial pressure. Once the cell has done the cellular metabolism or cellular oxidation for that matter, the carbon dioxide has been released over here. You can see the values over there. PO2 is 40 mmHc and PCO2 is going to be 45 mmHc which has been taken by the veins and there to the pulmonary arteries from again it goes to the alveoli. Noting all these values are pretty important for this preparation. There are two values which are supposed to keep it in mind. One is that the volumes capacities and the values of the partial pressure of your oxygen and then it is going to be carbon dioxide. And finally, brushing up all these things you have to understand the exchange. In terms of exchange you know very well is that your 97% of oxygen is transported via RBC and 3% is by plasma. Same is that for carbon dioxide where 20 to 25% of the carbon dioxide is transported via RBC and 70% is always done by bicarbonates which you should know very clearly is that in terms of the excretory system the PCT removes bicarbonates for this process just to correlation I am saying this and say for example you know rest of the things are removed by plasma. These values are also important in terms of the exchange of gases and you have this diagrammatic representation of the exchange of gases and this is also an expected question we have where in terms of alveoli walls you have this squamous epithelium to be bounded with. I repeat in terms of alveoli wall you have this squamous epithelium and you have the basement layer where this is a typical explanation how the exchange of gases takes place. With this you have to know one more graph which is important in terms of breathing and exchange of gases is that the O2 diffusion curve that is going to be the sigmoidal curve which you can know for it. For this you have to know one basic concept. One is formation of oxyhemoglobin, disassociation of oxyhemoglobin that's all. For the formation of oxyhemoglobin you know oxygen plus hemoglobin gives you oxyhemoglobin. It needs some factors is that there should be increase in PO2 concentration that is going to be increase in PO2 by this time you know what is PO2 is decrease in PCO2 decrease in H plus ions and decrease in temperature favors the oxyhemoglobin formation the vice versa that is going to be the decrease in PO2 and increase in PCO2 decrease in H plus and the temperature favors the disassociation of hemoglobin. I am making it clear I suppose 
this is going to be formation and this is going to be disassociation of hemoglobin and this we have a partial pressure that is you have this partial pressure you obtain a sigmoid curve like this and in this if you want you can make a note of p50 which is nothing but the partial pressure that is going to be the 50 percent saturation of the hemoglobin with that of the oxygen and then finally any human physiology concepts of that sort you are supposed to end up with disorders finally it is of any of the human physiology concepts you thorough right from that of digestive system to that of neural coordination you are supposed to end up with diseases and the first and foremost diseases which you can go for that is going to be asthma next is going to be emphysema next is going to be hypoxia and next is going to be the occupational disorders which I can say it is going to be silicosis and then it is going to be asbestosis whereas in terms of this emphysema it is mainly due to the cigarette smoking where the alveoli walls gets damaged and then it is going to be hypoxia understand the word it is hypo is lesser where the oxygen concentration becomes lesser that is going to be hypoxia in this you have these two types of hypoxia one is going to be natural the other is going to be artificial in terms of natural you all know being science students it is going to be the anemia which causes the lack of oxygen whereas in terms of artificial climbing and mountain there comes a difference or there comes a decrease in oxygen content and that becomes the artificial hypoxia and finally as i mentioned you it is going to be the occupational disorders for example a person who is working in a wool making factory yes yes uh, uh, rear all the wools from the sheep all the debris of the wool will go to his nostrils and the person who is doing this occupation will alone get these diseases and this is basically called as occupational disorders by this time you know what a silicosis is silicosis is that the uh, individuals working in the factory of making silicon those individuals will get a disease called as silicosis with this you can also make a note of asbestosis that is making of asbestos sheet so to finally sum up with all these things what i've told you for your preparation one is that you have to split the topic into two one is going to be breathing the other is going to be exchange in terms of breathing you are supposed to thorough the concepts of mechanism of the diagrams that is going to be inspiration and expiration and you are supposed to go with the values which you have specified the values the capacities and the partial pressure oxygen and carbon dioxide values and then it is going to be the exchange how many percent is being exchanged that is 97 percent of oxygen and uh, 70 percent of carbon dioxide is by bicarbonates and this stuff and finally you are supposed to end up any of the human physiology concepts with that of the disorders which you have specified here hope so we have made a small glimpse of this breathing and exchange of gases thank you students i hope so